Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have another vintage find haul, I guess? Uh, so my son and my mom were cleaning up this apartment that uh, my son's going to rent this fall, in you know, a property my mother owns, and um, they came across some vintage craft supplies. Now there were some uh, vintage, there was a big box of like um, old knitting magazines and um, uh, and acrylic yarn and stuff, which I just know I wouldn't use, so I just, um, I passed that along already, sent it on its way, but uh, I want to show you the things that I decided to hang on to for future projects. So this, this ought to be interesting. I actually just peeked in these tins. I haven't really looked through them, so I thought it'd be really fun just to kind of go through it together. So let's save those for last, and first we'll go through the more boring things. So this is just a couple of pairs of um, of long straight needles. I'd say they're about 14 inch needles. We've got a set of 13s, which are great for like big, fast, floofy scarves. We've got a set of uh, eights. We've got a set, and these are aluminum. We've got a set of fives and a set of, oh, those are their fives too, but they look smaller, a couple sets of fives. Now, um, I do have plenty of knitting needles, but I used to run a library knitting club for, I ran one for kids and I ran one for adults. And um, I might do that again at some point. It's nice to have the extra needles for that. And if I decide I don't want to, then I can always donate that to the library if they get another group going with another instructor. Um, actually, I'll tell you the truth. I like the Denise interchangeable knitting needles and Denise interchangeable crochet hooks because you get so many options in such a small, compact little package. Um, so honestly, those are, I, I could probably pare down to those, except for like double pointeds and small sizes. Um, I really like those, but that's not practical when you're teaching a class because everyone needs their own pair of needles and sometimes you need a few different sizes. And I like to be able to lend out and not worry about them not coming back or not coming back for a while. So uh, those, and then there was also some circular needles, which I almost didn't keep, but um, I kind of the last minute I decided I would. Um, so there's a variety of sizes. I don't know what the sizes are, but I do have a little uh, plastic, um, gauge that I can put the needles through and I can get the sizes from. So I'll probably wipe those down with alcohol and then uh, and then store them. I have a little like a little wallet with like little envelopes, plastic envelopes. I think it, uh, Boyce makes it and you can put your um, your needles in there and I, I'm just going to take the sizes and if I do have several of the same size I'm going to put them together. This one's actually an aluminum circular needle which I think I would prefer but again my Denise interchangeables you can use them as straight needles or you can use them as circulars in whatever length you need so you know it's really a fantastic set but again um classes or you know i might donate them to um, a nursing home or something i don't know i haven't completely decided but um i figured i if i if i didn't use it myself i can find find somebody too and this one actually has its packaging which is kind of cute because it's got that kind of 70s 70s looking uh package i'm trying to see if there's a date on that is there a date i don't see one but uh, but that's kind of funny. All right, so now let's take a look inside the tins. Um, this looks like an old cookie tin, probably like a butter cookie tin from, I don't know, the 70s or 80s. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, first, we've got some hook and eye trim, which I probably would use as an embellishment on a card or a book. It's a little kind of stained and old. Um, you know, it's been in the basement. I don't know how long it's been sitting in this basement. Um, apparently, my mother rented to... Um, uh, an older woman who I think she's passed on, but she had some stuff that none of her relatives wanted and just left there. So, um, so here we are. Uh, we've got some buttons. I love the old button cards. I think they're really, really kind of fun. Lansing, 15 cents. You can't buy buttons for 15 cents anymore. Le Chic, 29 cents. It's so funny because you can see some of the buttons have been used. They're probably purchased to make a garment or to replace, so it's kind of pretty, um, replace something on a on a blouse. Lansing Company, 36 East Platte Drive, Lansing, Iowa. I wonder if they're still in business. I should look them up. Oh, Lansing. She liked the Lansing buttons. And this card is really sweet. Uh, Lady Washington Pearls. It looks, uh, oh, it looks like a doctor and a nurse on that little bunt card. That's pretty cool. Oh, look, there's little cotter pins on the back. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Interesting. Um, oh, funny. Those will actually match my wool coat that I have. Uh, I'll probably save those. London Fog. Oh, my word. I think my coat might be London Fog. These might be, like, the actual buttons that are perfect. I'm going to, I will keep those for sewing because I think those will match my my winter coat which is like from the 90s the first thing I bought was like my very own money like first piece of like serious clothing and oh and here we have 
some, these look like uh, the little um, hooks you would put on a girdle or on a um, garter belt or something to hold your, your stockings. That would be really cute on some cards because I love, I love kind of like old vintage sewing themed um, card projects. There's quite a few of those. I think those would be really cute on a, on a card or a journal page or some sort of decor piece, altered book or something. Um, Cause I feel like my style is kind of like Victorian era winter uh, woman's dressing room with rust. You know, I feel like that's my, that's my aesthetic. Uh, that's kind of neat. Um, here we have, I don't know what that is. What is that? It looks almost like, oh, do you think that might be a, a ring? It's big though. It's I don't think it is because look how big it is. It would be like a men's ring if it was, but I don't think it is. It almost looks like you'd pinch it together and put something in those prongs. But I don't think that's what it is because that's too gaudy to be a ring and it looks, I don't know. It kind of had this, this whole, everything here has kind of like a musty, not really musty, but just kind of like basement smell. Not like my basement, because my basement gets used a lot and it's always being opened up. That almost looks like a, like you could put something there to be a prong, but I don't think that's what it is. If you guys know what it is, let me know in the comments below. I don't know if it's sewing related. Maybe it has something to do with buttons. I've got a, a bunch of big buttons. I've got a jar to throw all these big buttons in because, um, well, we, we all know the story of, of Lindsay's button adventures. I got I got, I got got room in one of my big ball jars for, for all those large buttons. Because I have in my large button ball jar. Oh, there's more of them. What the heck are these things? There's two more of them in here. Guys, you have to help me. Somebody who has been sewing or knitting or something longer than me, what are these things? That's crazy. I have no idea. We're looking at this together. I have not seen this stuff before. Yeah, my mom's like, bring this stuff home to your mother, Jackson. She'll she'll love it. And Jackson's like, my mom's trying to get rid of stuff. Don't encourage her. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, no, she'll love this stuff. <laughs> He's like, mom, do you even want this? I've uh, got some, what is that? JP coat. So I'd say there's some sort of thread in this container at one point, but it's full of thumbtacks thumbtack, thumb now. So I'm not going to open them. We'll leave those. Ooh, look at these. Look at these buttons. These are crazy. They're, um, they got the shank on the back. I don't think you could take, well, maybe you could. It looks like the shanks might be glued on, but those are fun. I love those resin type of flowers. Um, man, they'd be some pretty nice gaudy earrings if I wanted to go that route, but those are nice. I might actually make a mold for those so I could like make a mold for like resin or clay because those would mold really well and then I could make as many as I want. I've done that before with old buttons that were my Grammys because they were just so cool. Can you see the detail on those? They're gorgeous. Those are really gorgeous. Those are not going in the button jar. Those will go in with my resin flowers. Cause uh, sometimes I'll, if I get, even if I buy a button and I think it's really pretty like that, I'll often will make a mold. I'll use scrap polymer clay and I'll make a mold. The only thing with that is it's good for molding clay, um, but you can't mold resin in it cause it'll get stuck. You pretty much can just use it for molding clay. But anyway, we've got a couple buttons. Sesquitennial, 1970. Heartland, Susquehannock, 1920 to 1970. Heartland, so it must have been from Heartland, which is a town um, in Western Maine. Interesting, little little buttons. I'm gonna see if a historical society might want those because I don't have a use for them, but there's more, another button card. Oh, and we've got lots of buttons in here. Gosh, should I dump them out? Well, I can dump them into this basket, we'll see. See if anything, oh, what's this? What is that? It, oh gosh, what does that say? Elizabeth? Del, no. Is it, yeah, Elizabeth? Del, Gratia, Regina? I don't know what that means. If anybody does, let me know. I those in there. You can rifle through them a little bit better. Oh, this is definitely a butter cookie tin, I would say. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, careful. We've got a couple of little embroidery needles. No, those aren't embroidery. Those are, um, got some straight pins. <laughs> it's like part of a brassiere. <laughs> uh, oh, that's an interesting little slide. That'd be cute with ribbon on it on a card or scrapbook page. What is that? A part of a crayon? This is like a bit of a crayon. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry, isn't it, guys? We got some more buckles. We got some shaped beads. That star is kind of cool. Heavy graded, like a 
Fourth of July cards, some fabric covered buttons. Uh, also, oh, remember these? They, their buttons are, I think they're supposed to look like leather. They look like, uh, kind of like woven leather. Yes, guys, it's come to this. You're watching me sift through <laughs> vintage buttons from someone else's basement. Oh, my. Oh, another one of those full leather buttons. Oh, it's so funny how things like that can just bring back memories. I'm really curious about this. I'm going to try this crayon. What is this? Seems like a wax crayon. That's weird. I wonder what it's... No, it's just a wax crayon, I guess. I don't know. That's strange. Uh... Well, that's an interesting button. Oh, yes! Look, another one of those! That, my special button. My special button jar. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, there are certainly some button treasures in there. I will... I will have to put those away. Alright, let's look in this other tin. Anybody still watching? Hmm, <laughs> probably not. I'm not putting these tins on, t covers on tight again because I'm afraid that they will never, uh, I'll never get them off. So this says Paris. It's a little tiny book, which is kind of cute. I don't know what it is. Oh, and that really smells like old book. Uh, oh, look, they're like tiny little, oh my gosh, they feel like photographs. Le Tower Eiffel. L'Arc de Triomphe. De Toile. Terrible French accent. Well, of course, we're in Maine. We have a we have a large um, uh, French heritage because I think a lot of a lot of people from France immigrated to Canada and then came down to uh, to Maine. My grandmother was very French. She spoke in broken English. Uh, look at that. These are kind of neat. This is kind of a, odd, a neat little oddity. This would be kind of like, I'm going to put that up on my letterpress uh, tray with all my um, postage stamp rubber stamps. That's kind of neat. Just a funky little, I bet this was just a little souvenir. She must have went to Paris or something or whoever it was and picked that up. That's kind of neat. I just think that's kind of neat the way it is. I don't think, I'll, I thought I would take it apart and maybe collage with it, but I think just that the way it is is an interesting element and I'd probably just leave it. Look, I cut my finger. Um, I caught it on like uh, the catch of one of my cabinets today. I didn't notice it and it actually now it seems like it's getting uh, it's getting irritated. These are little oh it's tatting thread. Look at that label. I'll try not to bleed on it. Star tatting 60 yards. Oh can you see that? Look at that. There's all kinds of them. I'm not going to bleed on them though. Huh. So tatting would be those tiny, tiny little crochet hooks and they make the lace. Can you imagine crocheting lace with a tiny little spool? Like I've never seen them like this. They look kind of like crochet cotton spools, but they're tiny. I, that, that must be what was in here. It's like I could almost remember, like imagine like those gumball machines that kids get gumballs out of it, except it's full of like these little tatting threads. That'd be kind of funny. Oh my gosh, look, holy cow, look at these. Oh my gosh, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin them. Look at that. Can you see that? Is that showing up on camera? Do I need to put something? Oh, do I have a piece of black paper or something? Let me take this clipboard. Look at this. It's like, um, it's like a daisy chain of all this, like these little tatted flowers. Oh my goodness. I can't even imagine the patience. And they're kind of tangled. But that would be lovely on a project. Like as a trim. Although it will need to be untangled. But that's kind of pretty. Those are pretty. There's no way I'm ever going to do that. I'm, I'm never going to make those. I've crocheted flowers out of embroidery floss. And quite frankly, that is... Uh, friggy enough for me, but, oh, that's kind of neat. Okay, I'm going to very gently just kind of plop those back in there to untangle another day, but, oh, I just like, I like these little spools, and I think they might just be a nice, um, decoration, or, like, I might put them in, like, empty spots on my little letterpress thing, my little, I have a letterpress tray on the other side of my room where I have rubber stamps and stuff. Those might be kind of pretty in there, because I'm never going to, I'm never going to tap. That's just way too way too friggy for me, but I like the look of those little, those little spools are awfully cute. And there's a big one. 
I like the labels too. The labels on the old, like on spools and stuff. This one says um, Silkeen Crochet Cotton 50. That's really fine. That's finer than the number, I think it's number 10 or number 9, like uh, Aunt Lydia's crochet stuff that I that I would do flowers out of. And there's a bunch more of these little tatting crochet cottons. Oh my gosh. Kind of a tangled mess though, so I think I will... Um, take them uh, apart and what is this? This is probably the size of the needles. Oh, I bet that's what those um, what those embroidery needles are supposed to go in that I found in the other jar. So there you go, guys. I don't know if you found that interesting at all, but um, but hey, uh, I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of fun to look at old stuff. <laughs> Do you think it's fun to look at old stuff? Um, yeah, it's funny because I, I when I went to the the yard sales um, two week, two weekends ago um, at the church yard sale, there was all sorts of needles and yarns and things like that, and it was just neat to see. It's like I didn't pick any of them up because I'm like I'm sure there are other people that will appreciate. Although I did look at look twice at some double pointed needles, but I'm like, fantasy Lindsay is the sock knitter, not reality Lindsay. Reality Lindsay makes scarves on needles this size. Actually, Fantasy Lindsay crochets because she doesn't like to follow patterns. <laughs> and crochet you can be a little bit more uh, freewheeling with. But um, but yeah, anyway, that was kind of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you know what the heck these things are, let me know because I don't have a clue. Which is, you know, which is me any day. But uh, but that's kind of, uh, I'm curious because it's like, what what are they? You know? I have no idea. So there you have it. I'm going to put this stuff away. And thanks for digging through it with me. I do appreciate it. <laughs> it's fun to hang out and be nosy, right? Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.